if you think about medications for chronic diseases, you pay for the medication in a time period. There's some value generally um, accrued, right? Of avoidance of the complications of that disease. And so if you pay over a, a peer, over a period and you get value over a period, and then if a patient moves to a different plan, the new plan starts to pay and the, they get value um, as you go. So with these new durable, payer, uh, new durable therapies, you're paying all up front um, that price tag. It's generally a high price tag that's been generated based on a cure, so to speak. And so that in that case, you would expect that you pay this high price, but then the value still accrues over time, right? So there's a mismatch of the payment with the value. And if that therapy is durable and the patient stays at that plan, it may not be much of an issue other than a cash flow issue. But if the patient moves to another plan, that payer has lost the opportunity to recoup that value. Or if the patient um, doesn't get a full response, it's not a durable therapy, then there's no way to recoup under our current systems some payment for that, um, that lack of durability. So that's why uh, as you know, we look at these drugs and they haven't been studied for long periods of time, not certainly not like the lifetime of a patient, uh, then there's uncertainty. And so this is sort of the genesis of the desire to look at pay for performance where there's some measures of performance over time that reflect the ongoing durability of the product where the payer could recoup some of that um, money if it's not a durable therapy. So I, I think that we're already seeing uh, performance-based payments um, for short-term measures take hold in the marketplace. Um, those are in effect outside of gene therapy, gene and cell therapies, and certainly are in place for some of the cell therapies um, that I'm aware of. So that already has taken hold. I think people are still getting comfortable with all of the intricacies of the measurements, the regulatory issues around those and how that will play out. But uh, certainly the, foot, the toe is in the water on that and continues to grow. So I think that that it shows a willingness to move beyond our traditional pay for volume contracting and that will get adopted more broadly over time uh, as some of these uh, barriers are um, worked through or are removed. And, and so we'll continue to see that. I mean, we've already seen um, eight states that have filed summary plan amendments for their Medicaid plans that allow them to participate in these kinds of contracts. So the short-term stuff's easier to understand, it's easier to predict, it's you know, easier for everyone to get their head around. But as these products continue to evolve, uh, I do think there'll be uptake. Um, we'll see, see the results of how well they work and that will foster increased adoption.